And here we go. All right. And and here we go. Now we're now we're ready. Now we're serious. It's go time. Oh, welcome everybody to the Wolf Den podcast. And it always, you know, first try every time. Yeah. Guys, how you yeah. doing? I hope you're good. We're good. Hit yeah. the button! <laughs> God! <laughs> It's not, it's, it's, it takes a couple, yeah, it takes a couple presses, yeah, sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. guys, how you doing? Hey, you everybody. may notice a little something's different. Uh, the paneling fell down, <laughs> <laughs> so I just said, screw it, and yeah. I ripped it all down. It looks good, it looks fine. Yeah. I think it works, it, well, yeah, yeah, I think it works too. So much has happened in the past week in yes. the world of video games and there's so many things to talk about and by that we mean not that much not, nothing, <laughs> nothing, at all, nothing at all which yeah. is why we're talking about nintendo switch online and yes Virtual there's Virtual. news but it's like all b tier nothing news. important <laughs> yeah nothing happened um i didn't even realize i plugged in the wii because i couldn't get our logo to show up on here it wasn't working right a lot of technical difficulties that all happened at yes. once today uh this was just here so i plugged it in we're talking about virtual consoles yes so, we are you know what turned we're out we're finally be... gonna settle the debate which is better the virtual console or switch online and before we get into that what else are we wait what else are we talking about we got other stuff to talk about playstation's doing some weird but stuff there's some rumors about uh sony might actually make a ps3 emulation oh. native on the ps5 rather wow. than over cloud <laughs> um we got apple watch emulation uh, we got limited run games had a showcase that I okay. think people might be interested in. Uh, we got news on the new Mario Luigi game. We got, uh, bananas and more. <laughs> <laughs> what a great show yeah. today. Uh, but before we get into that, thank you to Sukasa for 30 months. Holy cow. 30 months of Wolf Bros. Thank you so much. Anthony Mille, thank you for the 100 bits. You know, this reminds me, shut up. George <laughs> McFarlane, thank you for the 39 months. Jesus, am I getting old or are you? How about yes, all of us? Yes, I am. Uh, and then we got Super Chats over on YouTube. Yeah. 20 from Pharma Gooch. Sorry, I missed the last few weeks. Got my card info stolen. Here's the money I missed. Well, thank you. Though probably you don't you have get, to do that. Probably because your card info was like, hey, uh, why is he giving so much money to two schmucks from Long Island? This yeah, is a red flag. You don't have to do that, but yes. I appreciate it. Uh, and Chad with the five bucks. Long time audio listener, but never been to a live stream before. Thanks for endless hours of entertainment. You guys have given me. Oh my God, thank you thank so much. Thank you for much. picking the one where we're half an hour late. <laughs> guys, you can watch us in whatever way you deem yes. necessary or enjoyable for you. You don't have to do anything for us. Mm -hmm. This is for you. Don't forget the Perfect Dark Science Donkey Kong Country HD port news. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Explain yourself, Edward. Explain yourself, Edward. Drop a link like you always do. Yeah. Oh, welcome to the Wolfden Pod. How are you guys? I'm good, Holy Lettuce. Thank you. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Sure. Uh, this came up from a tweet. Yes. Uh, a couple days ago. I don't know why. I don't know what the relevance is. Uh, oh, I guess the relevance is that there's a lot of cool stuff in Nintendo Switch Online right now. Yes. Uh, I'm going to hit this button. Will it work? So Hooray! It, this is just a random tweet that I saw. Uh, enough time has passed. Nintendo Switch Online greater than a virtual console. Right. And I have to say, I agree a little bit. I think, I think that they both have their pros and cons. Mm-hmm. I, I don't also know, agree. I don't know if the one is necessarily better than the other, but I think, I think initially we were upset because virtual console, the the virtual console model was good. Yeah, the virtual console was awesome, and we, I don't think anybody really had a problem with it when it launched. No, no, and then but then Switch Online came came along and said uh, it's going to be a subscription service where. We provide the games as long as you're subscribed to the service. You have access to the games. You have to connect to the internet once a week in order to play the games. Um, and the library was limited. The library is still a little limited, but I think now we've reached a point where, like, it's worth the money. It was cool when Nintendo Switch Online first launched. There were 20 games, and there were... Well, no, no, there were 20 games each console. No. How did it launch first? I'm now drawing a blank. It was NES. It was NES and SNES. Yeah, no, it was NES. And then later was SNES. Okay. 
And then yeah, it, it started with 20 games. Yeah. And then they did... Did they do 20 for SNES? I don't think so. Why am I drawing a blank here? The 20 NES games were... There were a lot of bad games. Yeah. And it made me realize there just weren't that many good <laughs> NES games. Um, but they had the important ones, which is all the Mario games. Yeah. Uh, and then SNES did the same thing, and I think SNES uh, was pretty decent. Yeah. The SNES... Uh, f- yeah, no, it was 20 games for SNES. But that debuted like a year later. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah. So it was incredibly limited at first. 20 games is a lot, but not when you're thinking about all retro games. Yeah. And Nintendo has a lion's share of the retro stuff. Yeah. So it was 20 only NES games felt extremely limited. Also, because a lot of them just weren't that good. We got like every sports game and those were all pretty bad. Yeah, and it wasn't even like that all the heavy hitters right out of the gate. Like we got Mario Brothers and Mario Brothers 3, but we didn't get Metroid until a few months later. We didn't get like uh Zelda 2 until the next year. We didn't get uh Kid Icarus and Star Tropics until the next year. We didn't get Punch Out until the next year. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Like they the rollout was very slow. Yes. And I think especially on like NES uh, it reached a point where the release had like slowed to a crawl. Mm-hmm. They were really like hitting the bottom of the barrel with like the games they were releasing on it, like Scat, <laughs> Special Cybernetic Attack Team. Yes, especially compared to like Virtual Console, had it had Scat, but it had the Mega Man games, the Castlevania games, the Contra games. You know, all the games uh, that you expect to be part of an NES library that weren't on Switch Online, partially because it took so long to get up and running that Konami and Capcom and all the other companies were like, let's do it ourselves," And they did. So I found a list of Virtual Console games. Yes. Uh, Because I'm starting to remember now, Virtual Console, they also did a slow rollout. They, every week, they would have new games. It would be three a week. Three a week, okay. Uh, But... If you look at the list, this is for the Wii in North mm-hmm. America. Just a regular old Wii. So it started in 2006. There are a ton of games yeah. on here. Comparatively, though, there's also a ton of games on Nintendo Switch Online. Like, you think about it, you wouldn't expect it to be this many. But yeah. altogether, there are quite a lot of games. Mm-hmm. And even on Switch Online, they have um, the SP version of games. Where, like, it's towards the end of the game, you get all the unlockables, or, like... Oh, so this counts some games twice, because yeah. that doesn't count as two yeah. games. <laughs> or it shouldn't count as two games. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, some SP or special versions uh, have, like, uh, little special challenges. Like, yeah. Uh, like, it'll drop you at the end of the game, or it'll or, uh, give you a certain item or something yeah. that you need for the game. Which is cool. It's, like, a different way to play a game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, initially... I was thinking we're getting close to the way that things were with Virtual Console. But Virtual Console had a lot more third-party stuff. That yeah, I think, that, and I think uh, that's Nintendo the big Switch thing. Is missing. Yeah. There is beginning to get some third-party stuff. Like, I'm surprised Capcom gave them the Mega Man uh, Game Boy games. Yes. We got a bunch of Sega games. Yeah, that, there's a whole Sega Genesis yeah, part on that's Switch very Online, which is incredible. Yeah. Uh, but we also had stuff like that on uh, Virtual Console. Yeah. Uh, there were a bunch of Sega There were Genesis, Genesis games. games. There were Master Sister games. There we, were Turbo Graphics games. We have, what, what's, we got Comic Zone, and, Splatterhouse. Yeah. Gunstar uh, Heroes. Gunstar Heroes. And Bonk's one? Adventure. Bonk's Adventure. None of those are Nintendo games. No. <laughs> no, because I remember I downloaded those games because this is when like the Virtual Console first came out. And Nintendo actually did something really interesting. They didn't release their games first. Mm-hmm. Well, they did, but then like they quickly pivoted to the Genesis and the Turbo Graphics games to like boost those profiles. So like, you know, when we got our Wii and we got access to Virtual Console, I'm like I'm gonna fucking download some Turbo Graphics games. I want to play these games. That's interesting because we got ours in February of 2007. Yeah. And uh, Comic Zone released in January 29th of 2007. So mm. you must have just immediately downloaded Comic Zone. <laughs> so glad I did. Terrible game. Bad game. Never it's, got past like the first two pages. Uh, it, if we ever talk about it on the backlog, I, I got some thoughts about that. Do game. virtual console games count? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there were a lot. Uh, 
actually yeah i think oh no that was just the sega genesis section yeah but yeah no there were a a lot of third party stuff and that's why i think people like virtual console the most but i think also too people like virtual console uh because you buy the game and that's it there's none of this you're not beholden to a subscription that's, service that's the biggest once you buy a game like it. It, the game is yours yeah, yeah. With Switch Online, you are beholden to this uh, Nintendo Switch Online subscription. If you lose your subscription or you don't renew your subscription, you lose access to the games. Um, the N64 games and the Genesis games and the Game Boy Advance games are not included in the base subscription. You have to pay an additional fee for yes. the plus the expansion pack subscription, which is even more money. Meanwhile, um, Virtual Console had N64 games. Right? They had N64 games. They were at a higher price, but, you know, you just had them. You could just get them. Yeah. And so because it's Switch Online subscription, it is tied to an internet connection. You do have to uh, connect to the internet at least once per week in order to verify that you have a valid account. Whereas with Virtual Console, if you lose internet access, you still have the game. Right. I do know that people also like Virtual Console because this is on a technical level and this is real nerd shit, but the games that uh, were downloaded, the emulator that they were using ran them in the native 240p resolution. And because of that, and because the Switch was an SD, the, the, because the Wii was an SD console, you can use it with... Um, popular upscalers like the frame mice and the ossc mm -hmm. to like get really good picture quality on like a modern tv i will say that nintendo switch online gets a lot of crap for their bad emulation quality yeah uh particularly I, the n64 i think it's a little overblown i think that n64 is already pretty hard to yeah. emulate so uh it's already gonna be pretty bad yeah um the wii wasn't necessarily like much better yeah it just what you said the resolution was a little easier to scale because then yeah. you just had to double it yeah That's all you had to do for that mm -hmm. um but it does a pretty decent job on uh nintendo switch online and there is yeah. the issues that people had with like uh the the fog in in zelda yeah uh ocarina of time they changed it they patched yeah, they're it. they're patching it i know um they're constantly I think recently stuff. perfect dark like wasn't a good emulation job but like the thing about it being online... What, what was it, wrong with Perfect Dark? It felt fine to me. There was some, like, like a I, graphical I glitch here or there, but, like, literally every emulator I've ever played that game on does the same thing. I saw one, like, twi th tw uh, Twitter thread. It was, like, the the drug defect you get in the second level, like, the blur that occurs is, like, too blurry. You can't see anything. Um, That's the point the of light, <laughs> the, <laughs> the light fixtures in one of the levels is, like, too bright. Like, you... You, uh, your gun when it passes over it like gets completely blocked by the mm -hmm. light instead of like your gun like literally blocking the light it's like little things like that yeah. here and there that like could be fixed with like updates and that's the good thing about it being online is that it can get patched it can get fixed down the road yeah so i really do like the way that uh game boy advance games look yeah with their own little pixel grid uh filter it looks really nice yeah uh so playing those on a big tv feels really good uh one of my biggest issues is the control schemes especially for nintendo yeah. 64 uh there's not much you can do to mess around with the control schemes and they kind of give certain games some control schemes that are just not. yeah it just don't make much sense i mean and i didn't they let you play around more with the virtual i believe they the did some i mean because the wii your standard controller was the wii remote and that was really only good for like nes games uh turbo graphics games and like some genesis games but they offered a classic controller they offered the gamecube controller to use for some games like they gave you options to like mess around and like try to make the game work for you the big thing with Switch Online is, like, especially with N64 games, like, they pre map them for you. Yeah. And, like, for a lot of games, it's cumbersome and it doesn't feel right. To the point where, like, Nintendo, like, thought ahead and was like, we'll just resell the controllers that we made yeah. originally. I do think it's cool that they offer the controllers. Uh, yeah. And they're pretty... They're extremely close to yeah. the original controllers. And they feel really nice. But... They're a little expensive, 
and yeah. they are only available if you have a Nintendo Switch Online subscription and if you buy them directly from them. Yeah. Whereas the classic controller and stuff for the Wii and the Wii U, you can get from Best Buy. Yeah. And you know you can get it on sale and stuff. You can get it used. Mm -hmm. Uh, the controllers for Nintendo Switch Online you need to buy each individual one. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't need to, I guess. You can you can use a regular old Pro controller. You don't need to use those controllers. Yeah. But uh, I'm not exactly happy with the way that they handle selling those individual controls yeah. um i'll say though there are currently 36 nintendo 64 games on nintendo switch online the wii only had 21 wow yeah so switch online switch online there. according to wikipedia switch there are several uh, titles that were not available on virtual console that are now available on switch online like pilot wings 64 Oh, it's not on a virtual console. I don't know. So that's that's the thing about, you know, I think because the Switch is so immensely popular that they're able to add more games to it mm -hmm. than they were able to in the past. Like games that were limited to Japan, you know, now they have a wider audience, especially because the Switch is region free. You can access the Japanese uh, Switch online. Yeah, that's been really cool. Games. Yeah. One of the arguments I've seen for Nintendo Switch Online is that people are playing games that they never would have otherwise yeah. because it's just included in the subscription yeah. and they could just play around. And, and that is true. Like, I get more excited. Uh, I mean, it was pretty exciting to see what new games would pop up on Virtual Console every week. That's, yeah. There's a whole song about it. Yeah. Um, but it's also exciting whenever something drops on Nintendo Switch Online because yeah. I can just play it even if I don't... Uh, if I wouldn't have bought it otherwise, I can just jump in and see what's up. Yeah, it like gives it. people the ability to just hop in. And like, that's how I played Super Metroid. I don't think I would have played it otherwise unless Nintendo like offered it to me. Fucking win back. Oh, win I played like a lot of win that's back. That's the thing. Like we, would, like, we would rent it from Blockbuster back yeah. in the day because we, we, we were N64 kids. And that was the closest we had to Metal Gear at the time. And like years go by and we would joke about it and make fun of it because <laughs> it's fucking win back. Who cares? And then it's on Switch Online and you play it even for like 15 minutes and you're like, hey, this ain't that bad. I actually kind of really, <laughs> I, I played it as a meme yeah. and then I was like, wait a minute. I actually <laughs> like, there's, really like there's this There's something game. to this game. Yeah. yeah like, and that would have never happened. It's dated as hell. Yes. But like you stick with it. Like. It's got something. And the thing is that I have a million different ways to play games like Winback. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I've had it on an emulator before. We have the PS2 version of Winback. Yeah. As a joke. Yes. We bought it as a joke. <laughs> but I have a million ways to play all of these games. But when they drop on Nintendo Switch Online, I get excited because it's yeah. an official way to play it. It's usually really nice and, and, and clean and pretty and the emulation is good. And it's just super easy because yeah. it's right there. It's on my Switch. I can play it on the TV. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to mess around with save files or anything. It's yeah. just, everything's there and ready to go. So that gets me really excited. Uh, one of the other arguments that I heard was that uh, people say, like you said earlier, with Virtual Console, you buy one of the games and you just own it. Yeah. It's yours. So they can't like take it off of Nintendo Switch Online. Mm -hmm. It's yours. That, that, that you have it. Uh, but... Your virtual console games do not transfer. Uh, so your Wii virtual console games did not transfer to the Wii U. They only did if you, you could upload all of your uh, Wii data to the Wii U, but it was locked in a Wii emulator, uh, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wii U had its own virtual console, but you had to buy the games again and the Wii U didn't have all the games. They didn't have Genesis games. They didn't have Turbo Graphics. It had games. significantly less. So yeah. the Wii in North America had 427 games, according to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And the Wii U in North America had three. Where would it go? 318 games. Yeah. That's significantly less. That's over 100 less games. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could move your. Like if you wanted Comic Zone yeah. on the Wii U, mm -hmm. how would you do it? You're saying you upload your data to you the would, Wii U, yeah, and it would run it in a virtual. It Wii would U? run it in a yeah, in a virtual, virtual Wii. Wii, yeah, and it would have Comic Zone. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, but it I was like a pain screwed. in the ass. You had to like. Oh, it literally says it right here. Yeah. Uh, as of February 2019, the Wii Shop channel users can still continue to re-download previous purchased content and or transfer read data over to a Wii U via the Wii U transfer tool. Okay, so first of all. Oh, yeah. If you still own it, you can download yeah. it still. Um, 
But if you're on a Wii U, you need to use the transfer tool. The Wii U transfer tool, if purchased from the Wii Shop channel. So that would be the only way to do it. Wolf Dead Dad in the chat is really, really jonesing for the win. Oh, God. For the win hotel in Vegas. Win is back? He, not? he heard win back. You triggered him. Christ. Oh, my God. I just saw a picture of um, Aaron Moriarty, who plays uh, Starlight on The Boys. Uh, oh, she okay. she was at the win, oh. and she's and according to her Instagram, she's worse than my dad, our dad, she is with all the hashtags and stuff like being at the win. Should I watch the boys? I, I'm more and more interested, but there's I, four seasons. Yeah, so I'm lot. in the same boat. Like, I guess I should watch the boys, but like, I don't have the time to watch. I'm behind <laughs> on literally everything. Like, come on, come on. So how many? So we have four twenty-seven on Wii. We got three eighteen on Wii U. How many do we 282. have? Two hundred eighty-two. I had to know. Yeah, I had to do math because like Wikipedia does it by system. Okay. So they're catching up. Yeah. So I am not all that happy with Nintendo Switch Online. I wish it was different. Yeah. I, I wish that uh, it was all one app. I don't know why it's segmented it between different yeah. systems. It does look kind of cool, though, when you have them all on the home screen in, yeah. a, in, a, in a row. And but it does suck that the mature N64 games are in a different app. That's really that's, bizarre. Yeah. That's really bizarre. Um, I wish there were other games in it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure more will come. I'm sure with Virtual Console, I would have wished for more games, too. Yeah. Uh, I wish the control schemes were better. I wish that you didn't have to be online. I don't know. I mean, the big argument is owning the games, buying them individually, mm -hmm. or having a subscription service that just has all of them. Yeah. And I don't like this world that we live in where everything is a subscription service. Yeah. Uh, I would like to have the option to do either one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got to say, I don't hate the subscription service. It's pretty cheap. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be honest, this is probably you know, the way to do a subscription service, at least for video games, have the classic stuff, because as we're seeing with Game Pass, you know, have putting the new stuff on there is a financial burden. Like people, yeah. you know, will play that and not buy the game. And therefore the studios could potentially risk losing millions of dollars that they need to survive. Well, Nintendo has been doing their uh what do they call the trial period where like yeah. if you have nintendo switch online one random weekend they'll just give you a game for free right uh but you can only do it for that you can only play the game for that weekend and that seems like a promotional thing like maybe yeah. a game isn't doing too good or they want people to get excited about a game and try it for yeah. themselves and maybe they'll eventually hopefully buy it uh that is a good way to promote some games that maybe aren't mm -hmm. making that much money and that's something that xbox and playstation could think about instead of uh being a financial burden yeah to them um so yeah i again i have issues with nintendo switch online i'm not like it's not like my favorite thing in the world yeah. but i don't hate it i'm sure that also now we have so many more options there's so many more games now years ago when it launched it kind of sucked because there weren't really that many games. yeah uh, and uh, there was a lot of stuff that was missing. There was a lot of whole systems that were missing. Yeah. Now we have a pretty decent selection of systems. Uh, I still wish there was more. I still wish there was GameCube. And stuff. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with what we got. I went nuts when I got Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Uh, that was really what I was missing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, I'm pretty good with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I still wish that there was an option to buy games individually. Well, but... it'll be interesting to see what happens... When this, when the next switch comes out, the successor, as it were, yeah. you know, because they, you know, all the rumors suggest that it's going to be backwards compatible. So I'd imagine all this stuff transfers over, and if that's the case, you know, hopefully that makes it possible to grow Switch Online and add more games, maybe add GameCube games. Finally, I would like it all to be in one app. Yeah, yeah, just one big app, mm -hmm. and uh have an extra section if you have the expansion pass mm -hmm. that way people don't have the expansion pass they could look around in it and be like oh i want to play perfect dark oh yeah. wait i can't I need to upgrade you know mm -hmm. and then they know they need to upgrade that'll make things less confusing also this whole time i've completely forgot you could play these fucking games online and playing online yeah. is pretty damn sick the online net code is really bad but <laughs> uh a lot of the people i play with usually have pretty good internet anyway yeah. so uh it's not so bad playing mm -hmm. with randoms not fun 
don't yeah. do that. But playing Never with friends, uh, if you all have pretty good internet, uh, it's great. Being yeah. able to like have somebody else experience Perfect Dark with you is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, recently just played the Four Swords, and that was pretty cool. Uh, that's something I never would have ever done on a Game Boy Advance yeah. because you need another person with a Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I think you. I think everybody needs the game, right? Yeah, it's one of those games. Yeah. Uh, and you need a link cable. And nobody has. Yeah. So like, uh, this made it way easier to play. And and it's such a weird niche thing that game because the the multiplayer mode is a roguelike. Yeah, and I would have you lose out on that whole part of that game. That, mm -hmm rarely anybody played because yeah. there's so there's so much more hardware you need for that uh and you get to do it with with uh the transfers online very very easily same thing with um the super mario 3 e-reader levels on on yeah. Game Boy advance uh what is it super mario world 4 super mario, super mario advance 4 super mario brothers 3 yes uh, you get all of the e-reader levels they're yeah. just there and that's something that was also locked behind uh hardware that was impossible to find yeah. so almost nobody played all of the e-reader levels back then so mm -hmm. uh now you basically get super mario Bros. 3 with all new levels yeah uh, and that wasn't available previously so. uh uh but i think that was on virtual console actually uh because i have a rom that says it's from virtual console <laughs> yes it was on the wii u eShop. yeah so it's important that there's a service like this at all, whether yeah. it be Virtual Console or Nintendo Switch Online. But I'm not hating. Listen, Nintendo, the reason we're having this conversation at all is because Nintendo Switch Online had such a bad rap. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, no, it certainly um, has. Uh, I don't hate the emulation quality. Uh, the only thing that I hate really about the technology is the netcode. I think, yeah. it, I think it's pretty bad. I think, you know, the other day my friends were talking about it. We wanted to play the games. And I said that, honestly the because most of my friends don't play online hmm. i said honestly the subscription price is worth it for the game collection yeah but i'm still trepidatious about the price for the expansion pack yeah it's very easy to recommend the original because it's only yeah. 20 dollars for the year yeah, that's nothing for how many games you get yeah the expansion pack is significantly more if it brings it, that whole price up to 50 yeah now you get you do kind of get a lot you get N64 games, Genesis games, Game Boy Advance games, plus DLC for a lot of your pre-existing Switch games like Mario Kart and um, Animal Crossing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's still a significant leap in price. And are those games worth it to you? Especially like with Genesis games, most of those Genesis games were previously available on Switch via the Sega Genesis collection. And that was, and that's typically on sale for like, Thirty dollars regularly. Yeah, a lot of these games you can find somewhere else, but a yeah. lot of them you can't. Yeah. So, uh, I think fifty dollars for the whole thing with the expansion pass is still not that much when you're considering uh how expensive subscription services are these days. Yeah. But it's so much easier to just say twenty dollars. Yeah. If these people don't care about N sixty four games or Game Boy Advance games, mm -hmm. you can save a couple bucks. But uh. I think the N64 library is pretty sick. And the Game yeah. Boy Advance. I, I didn't realize Game Boy Advance was also oh, part yeah. of the expansion. Uh, I think some of my f favorite games are the Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, I've been having the most fun with the Game Boy Advance stuff. Um, what if the price increases in the future? It will. It probably, will. It always generally. does. You know, I think Nintendo has been surprisingly good at like keeping it consistent. But you know, just wait. It'll it'll go up. <laughs> yeah, it will almost certainly go up. Yeah. Uh, because they keep adding stuff, but also because inflation, everything's yeah. just getting more expensive. Um, so there you go. I thought we were gonna have a lot more of an argument about uh the value of virtual console, but things have changed a lot. Yeah, it's gone a lot. Uh, yeah, has gotten I think a lot Switch better. Online has become like a good uh replacement for virtual console yeah. obviously the choice to buy the games versus like have them all locked behind a subscription service um is one that still needs to be had but i think for what it is switch online is good uh matt bat mabel in the youtube chat says the only problem with nintendo switch online is that we don't know what will happen when nintendo stops supporting the service we don't own any of the games and have no option to do well, so. well we know what's going to happen you're going to lose access to the games and nintendo yeah. is 
you know, somewhat notorious for just like, yeah, it, no more. <laughs> I think that's the issue is that they can just remove games. And that could have happened on Virtual Console, yeah. but you would have still had the option to download the game even right. if they removed it and mm -hmm. purchased it already. So that's one good argument for having a piecemeal service where you can buy the games. But as far as I know, they haven't removed anything. No. No. But, I mean, a lot of the stuff's licensed, so there yeah, is a huge possibility that's true. that happens, especially when they move over to the next console. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. I think we, uh, I think it's unanimous. Everybody loves Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. Uh, Rose City Will gave us $5 on the YouTube and said, love the Ahi guys, and thanks for keeping me company in the gym. Happy to finally make it to a live. Any advice on getting COD on a Steam Deck? No, you can't. Yeah. I don't know. I w if you know, you let me know because I would love to get Call of Duty on my Steam Deck. You, what is it? It's uh, Battle.net? Yeah. Yeah, so you would need to find a way to download the Battle.net well no, well, no. It is I have it on Steam. Right. Uh, the problem is the anti-cheat. Um, a lot of these multiplayer competitive games have anti-cheat okay. that uh fucks everything yeah so i bought it on steam so i should be able to play it but, right uh they okay. don't they don't care about linux at all uh, which is unfortunate you can try getting windows on your steam deck but that runs like shit and i'd yeah. imagine call of duty would not run good like that all right uh what else did we want to talk about? Oh, we got DJ Skeletor. Thank you for the nine months. We got Warheart. Thank you for the gifted sub. I think that's cool. Let's just go right into it. All right. Nope. <laughs> that's not it. Backlog! 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 Oh yeah, baby, it's backlog time. How you doing? Good to see you. Speaking of retro games, this is the part of the show where we talk about retro games and the retro games in our video game collection. Because every game we've ever bought goes into an Excel spreadsheet and say, hey, we're going to pick one at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. We have 960? 963. 63, okay. Yeah. Uh, picking a random number, we got 307. 307, and that is... Diablo 3 Eternal Collection for the Switch. Okay, this, I did play this. Okay. Probably for about two hours. <laughs> uh, this game had been out for so long. Uh-huh. Uh, so everybody's played Diablo already. And then for some reason, they decided to release it for the Switch. Right. Well, I think because at that point, people realized, oh, the Switch is actually hot right now. So we should start mm -hmm. putting games on it. And like, you know, Diablo has been around forever. It's one of the most popular games in the world. So it makes sense to put it on the most popular system in the world. Yeah, uh, and it was cool. I mean, it was it got it gave me a reason to play Diablo because I probably yeah. would have never played it otherwise. Uh, and it was good. I think I played it with people. Uh, it's not the type of game I would normally play at all. Yeah, uh, I built my little character. I don't even remember what type of character I was. Look at how muddy this looks. <laughs> uh, this is the Switch version. This is the Switch version. Okay. Uh, it did not look that great on the Switch. I mean, right. it was already a re like it wasn't that old by the time this came yeah. out, but it was like old enough. Um, and it was basically like you're running it on a really bad computer. Yeah, it it ran fine. Everything like it was stable. It just you know it's like thirty frames, not the most exciting uh uh, uh graphical yeah Marvel or anything. Uh, and it's I mean you know everybody talk so highly of diablo games and it is really just a dungeon crawler you're just going yeah you're just going straight and you're killing a bunch of bad guys and you're getting loot off of them yeah i Which, was gonna say i haven't played many uh looter uh any games with these sorts of looting mechanics yeah. the one that i played the most was destiny and destiny probably got a lot of it mechanics from diablo yeah because like diablo and the diablo 2 especially like those were the innovators of the style not like this over the head you know dungeon crawling mechanic that was gauntlet but like diablo took it to like an extra level with like the rpg elements and the looting and all that and the the lore and the backstory and the, the imagery and, and all that crap yeah uh so 
I found it. I found my live stream from when, <laughs> from when I did it. This is from five years ago, November 5th, 2018. Oh, man. It's from this YouTube channel, the Wolfden Podcast YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Here I am with the great quality. <laughs> I played this for three hours and then probably never played it again. Right. So I guess this is the character that I decided. Does he look like me? Let's uh, see. I don't know. That's not me. No. Did I play it by myself? I thought I played with people. I guess I was some sort of magic guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't like love it. It was like good. It was like fine. But I, like there was other games that I would have rather played. Yeah, I feel like this is not a game that like would be up our alley normally right. because of all the RPG mechanics in it. And also, too, from like a gameplay standpoint, like it seems very basic. Not ba basic might be the wrong uh, phrase, but like it's not it doesn't look very dynamic. It just no, looks like it's very bland. Yeah. Compared but, to what I mean, before that, uh, this is like what games looked like, like yeah. when this game came out. But by the same token, like, you know, you look at the, the moment to moment gameplay and like it looks very similar to something like, say, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But that game is much faster pace. It yeah. has much more dynamic combat. And you could play as Spider-Man. You can't play as <laughs> Spider-Man in this. You can play as Mercy. Look, there's uh, uh, the Mercy Wings from oh, Overwatch. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think that was just one of the like yeah. bonuses for getting this version of the game. How does combat work in this? Is it like... Because I think on PC, like the original Diablo is on PC. It was just like clicking. Yeah, no, it yeah, is. And yeah. it's basically the same I thing I think here. it's real time. It's real time, okay. but but yeah, you're just mashing. Okay. Uh, but that's not what this game is really all about. It's about gathering as much cool loot as you can and yeah. trying to uh, get the better loot than what you have. And this is what I'm doing in this clip here is I am just comparing the different loot that is on the ground versus what's in my inventory and seeing what I want to use. And that's not fun. I, <laughs> like, I don't care like what game it is. Like that's not fun. It, it is. It yeah. is fun if the game is fun. You have to, but yeah, like you have to also do it in like a an easy to understand way and like a very seamless way. Look at how much hair I don't have in this. <laughs> Look at how big my forehead yeah. is. Yeah. What you, happened? You were known for your big forehead. <laughs> my forehead's huge in that. Anyway, uh, I don't like. I don't like. I don't typically like games that are looter face yeah. focused unless they have good mechanics and I like the rest of the game. Right. I do fall into some loot holes though. I, I Yeah. I liked I fell into the loot hole with Destiny. I fell into the loot hole with the first Borderlands. Right. I liked the first Borderlands. And then I decided to have a vendetta against Gearbox for some reason. Well, because uh Randy Pitchford's a, a dumb weird, guy. A, a weird guy. Yeah. Uh so if I jumped into Diablo when it came out First, not the Switch version, the first version. When look up when it did come out. Uh Diablo first came out on Windows and oh. Mac OS in uh twenty twelve. Diablo three. Yes. And then the Switch version in twenty eighteen. Wait, Diablo three came out in twenty twelve? Diablo three came out in twenty twelve. Oh, that this is a fucking old game. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm sure if I jumped on it sometime around then, maybe not twenty twelve, maybe a little after that, yeah. uh, I would have fallen into the loot hole, but I'm playing a at this point, a uh, six-year-old game on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. I was pretty uh, underwhelmed by it. I mean, Diablo 2 came out in 2000. So, I mean, people were starving for a Diablo game. There were only game, two but... years? What? Two th oh, 2000. 2000. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. That's the thing. It took 12 years to get Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. What's a little bit more weight to get it so you could play it on the toilet with yeah. the Switch? Yeah. So... It was cool. I only played this game because uh, I was playing every new Nintendo Switch game at the time. Every popular Nintendo Switch game yeah. that was new, I was uh, downloading and playing it because I was mostly a Nintendo Switch channel, so I felt obligated to. Uh, and I liked it. Uh, it's... I don't know if you, I would even recommend it now. Diablo 4 is out now. Yeah. I remember this game, too, Like had some weird controversy surrounding its auction house. Auction house? Yeah, there was... Uh, it was reported that Diablo 3 will feature two types of auction houses. One where players can spend in-game gold, and another where players could buy or sell virtual items for real-world money. Ooh, I didn't the know real that. money auction house was not available in the hardcore mode. Uh, prior to release, Blizzard stated that uh, nearly everything that drops on the ground, including gold, could be traded with other players, uh, either directly or through the auction house system. Aside, 
aside from certain bound to a aside from certain items bound to on accounts items uh such as a staff of uh hurting need uh, needed to blah 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 blizzard stated that there would be very few items that would be bound to a particular character and therefore untradeable uh did i believe they shut down the auction house though at us yeah uh they were shutting down the auction house due to a legal issue okay so yes the auction house was broken in the beginning i believe is yeah. that only for the original version or for the switch version too uh f- i don't remember that at all yeah i think they might have shut it down real money auction house is open june 12 2012 uh f- currently we have yeah the, the auction house was shut down march 18th 2020 uh 2014 oh way earlier than yeah way before the switch version. yeah uh, the Switch version gave you some in-game items for buying it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and that was cool. But, like, otherwise, uh, I it's hard to recommend. Yeah. Diablo 4 is out right now. It's unfortunately not for the Switch. So you got PlayStation, Xbox, and Windows. Um, I don't even see Mac on here. Uh, so play that if you can. If you can't, Diablo Immortal is really controversial because yes. it's a mobile game that had really bad uh, microtransaction stuff, like really uh, nefarious microtransactions. Yeah. But I heard the gameplay was actually pretty good in oh, Diablo Immortal, go. if you could avoid all of the uh, nefarious microtransactions. Right. So uh, that you can play on your phone. So give one of those a try if you want yeah. to try Diablo Immortal. Uh, Diablo 3, I know this is going to be blasphemous for, for a lot of people. I played it fucking what six years after it came out yeah so wasn't happening i also i played other games that were similar that took from diablo right. 3 uh by this point so that's why i was kind of like a little under- yeah. i felt like I'm, I'm playing this legendary game except i played all other games that ripped diablo off right. already so yeah kind of ruined it for me um so yeah I got it because I was just playing every new Nintendo Switch game at the time. Uh, I don't know if I can recommend it. These right. Try try one of the other Diablos. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, breaking news says Wolf Den Dad. Oh God. Wolf Den. Why can't? Wolf Den. YouTube channel hit 905,000 subs at the this rate it I'll be 125 when you get to a million. That's not how that works. <laughs> uh come on people, let's subscribe. Need that netjet to the wind tower suite. Wolf de- hashtag Wolf Den Dad. Oh, and buy one of those shirts son one's wearing. Oh, you are wearing a I shirt. I am wearing a shirt. So our father Kuartan, Long Island. And not a not a math guy. No. <laughs> uh when did we hit nine hundred thousand? It was just like two months ago? Yeah, a month so, or two yeah. ago. So uh, now I can't do math. <laughs> Five thousand well, subs in two months? Yeah. Let's say one month. Okay. So ninety five months? Oh, that's kind of a lot. Sorry, Dad. No, that's not how that works. That's not, I can't do math. Uh, 20, it'd be 19 months. It'd be 19 Social months. Social Blade is only going back to middle of June. If it's 5,000 subs in one month, it would be 19. Right. He's not going to be 125 in 19 months. No, he's just acting like 125. <laughs> Bob, you scheduled a YouTube short to go live during the podcast? No. I posted one earlier today. Did it just... Maybe it showed up in your feed during the podcast. Yeah. I didn't even get a notification for it when, when, I, when I posted it. Let me make sure. I have a lot of YouTube. Uh, what's the verdict on virtual console versus Nintendo Switch Online? You got to scroll back to the podcast, buddy. Yeah. Um, the verdict is Nintendo Switch Online. Actually, pretty good, though. You may hit... May 9th, you hit 900,000 subs, but who's counting? May 9th. That was a while ago. Yeah, it was a month ago. More than a month ago. Oh, okay. So, wait 19 months. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now we'll get into some real news. How about that? Yes. What do we have to talk some hard about? Hard-hitting. Oh, let's talk about Sony. Okay. 
Sony is developing a PS3 emulator for select titles on PS5. Uh, Sony is reportedly working on a PlayStation 3 emulator on PlayStation 5 for select titles. Um, according to Insider... Uh, how the fuck do you pronounce this? Uh, Spet... Spe special Nick. Special Nick. Oh, that's not right. Um, mm -hmm. On the most recent episode of Xbox Era Podcast, Sony is currently working on a backwards compatibility for select PlayStation 3 games on PS5. The wording makes it seem like not every PS3 game will be included, uh, similar to how Microsoft did its backwards compatibility program for Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One and Series X and S. The Insider also does not know if the emulation will include new features. I didn't get any more details than that. Will it have an FPS boost? I don't know. All I heard was that Sony's working on selective PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility. Giant Bombs, Jeff Grubb, that guy, also <laughs> mentioned he that- always fucking comes out of yeah. nowhere these articles uh also mentioned that he heard sony is making its own ps3 emulator it's something that i've heard has been in the works for quite some time uh i thought it was going to get revealed earlier this year when i first heard about it it clearly didn't happen but that doesn't mean we'll never see it um maybe it does uh grub said during giant bombs game mess mornings on june 24th playstation fans have been clamoring for backwards compatibility of ps3 games on modern consoles for a while now uh, while they can be streamed through PlayStation Plus, that doesn't provide the same experience as playing locally due to the pot uh, potential performance issues. Sony has been updating its older game library on PlayStation Plus, however. It has already added trophies to older PS1, PS2, and PSP games in the PlayStation Plus catalog. Uh, the most recent was Sucker Punches, Sly Cooper, and the Thievius Raccoonus for the PlayStation 2. This isn't new news. It's... We've well, heard this before. Well, the, the big thing is that they're working on an emulator that runs locally on the PlayStation 5 as opposed to only streaming PlayStation 3 games over yeah. internet. I'm almost positive we've heard that before. We've heard people talk about why hasn't Sony done this already because Sony could easily do this. I've heard about them making a PS3 emulator. Have you? Yeah. Because I haven't. Not, are we re referring to them running the disc off of the PlayStation 5? No, right? I mean, this is just referring to playing PlayStation 3 games locally. Natively. On, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, similar, we've heard that. Similar heard to that how you before. do the PlayStation 2 games. I'm almost positive yeah. we've talked about that on the, on the show before. I mean, and what's happening here is freaking uh, special Nick came out and said that they're doing this. So right. Jeff Grubb's like, oh, yeah, I heard about that. Now he feels like he could, <laughs> he's allowed to say that he's heard it. Right. Um, Gavin Guidry says, I'm here for you. Well, yeah, that's for a good it's, three stuff. Honestly, like it's I mean, Microsoft has proved that it's like a viable option mm -hmm. and Sony has a really vast library of games that like people still have, but don't have a way to play them. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's locked on PlayStation three. PlayStation three is notoriously hard to emulate. It's mm -hmm. notoriously hard. Like it, it's just not a usual architecture. Cause that was at the time when they were getting both Sony and Microsoft were getting weird yeah. with their architecture because they wanted to try to make sure nobody was, uh, pirating their shit yeah uh because piracy was a pretty big deal back then yeah uh these days it's not so bad mm -hmm. uh but uh one of the ways to combat piracy was to make it almost impossible to yeah. emulate the game uh and that's why they did that yeah uh, but that made it almost impossible for them to emulate their own yeah. games in the future so, so that's where we're at now. PlayStation 3 has been uh, tough for them to figure out. Yeah. But I mean, you know, end users have figured out there are PlayStation 3 emulators. They're cumbersome and they don't and always work. And they're yeah. weird. Like you just don't get a shield in Dark Souls or yeah, Demon Souls but or something. Like, you know, those are people working on their free time. Sony has yeah. the resources to actually pay people to do this full time to develop a proper emulator like they did with the PS2, which also has very difficult architecture because it's a proprietary chip, and yep. the PS1 also has proprietary chip, therefore difficult architecture. So it's possible. It's just, you know, it's labor intensive and it's going to cost money. It's two things that Sony doesn't want to do. Yeah, and they don't probably see the value because they're like, nobody wants to play these old games. Which is a problem because, like, yeah. that's been the mentality of the video games industry for years. And... You know, as we've said on this show, like having access to the past is a valuable thing. You know, that's why we we spend so long talking about the merits of Switch Online. 
yeah, we're old and we like old things. Yes. Damn and it. like, honestly, I would love to just be able to pop a PS3 disc or a PS2 disc into my PlayStation 5 and play it. Because, like, I don't want to have to go dig out my PS2 and hook it up to my TV to that's, make sure the cables are right. That's why I play Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. I have all of these games. I have a million different ways to play these games. I would much rather just play it on the console that is already connected to my TV. Yeah. So, I hope that they do do something with this. Mm -hmm. uh, their service, their PlayStation Online service isn't that bad. No, it sounded bad, and then I used it, and I was like, "Ah, it's not so bad." So, uh, but it's expensive. It is. It expensive. does lock a lot of games behind the subscription service, primarily like the the classic games. You have to play the you have to pay the most expensive tier in order to get the PS One games, which mm -hmm. I think is backwards. So, it it's not. I don't I don't recommend it to people because of that. You yeah. know, and it's confusing the messaging. I tweeted the other day, like, because allegedly uh, Time Splitters is coming to playstation 5 the ps2 version is coming to playstation 5 and i asked you know can i just buy it or is it going to be locked to the subscription service because it's confusing their messaging apparently you know you can just buy ps2 games but i didn't know that oh well that's cool that you yeah can. sony is really bad at uh messaging things like that like yes. where things are available how you can get them uh in what way you have to mm -hmm. navigate to get them it it's a lot of barriers that make it uh, frustrating to want to buy anything yeah. from, from their service. Meanwhile, Xbox is like, do whatever you want. We'll yeah. figure it out later. <laughs> um, Retro Collects with $5 on the Super Chats. Thanks for all the Super Chats. Uh, they said, Will, any plans to post or open a letterbox? I thought about it, but like, I don't watch that many movies anymore because I just don't have the time anymore. So, also, I don't want to get involved in that shit i hate movie people like <laughs> i've been looking at the i've been getting fed uh the r slash videography subreddit yeah what a hellhole <laughs> these are all just like wedding videographers yeah. that think that they're movie makers yes <laughs> and they're like just they're they just they're just throwing yeah. around wild opinions. I about think my gear and stuff. my problem is I spend too much time in like you know nerd movie circles online. So like I'm used to like you know people arguing like oh there's too many women in Star Wars. Oh Superman's got seams on his costume and all dumb shit like that. Yeah. And I forget sometimes what it's like to watch like a proper you know capital M movie. Where like you could just watch a movie and enjoy it on its like cinematic merits. I watched The Iron Claw a few mm. weeks ago. That's a fucking movie. Yeah. That's a proper ass movie. You don't, you know, it, you forget like what it is like to watch something that's like very artful and like very emotional and like tear jerking and like really like pulls something out of you when you spend so much time watching movies about people in bright underpants beating up other people in other bright underpants. So. Oppenheimer's a little dumb, right? Did you see Oppenheimer? Yes. A little dumb. It's I watched like an hour of it on the plane and I have no <laughs> I have no intention on finishing no, it. No, op dude, Oppenheimer is very good. It's just it's long. I mean people want to like they give you nothing to latch on to. Like like what do you I need nothing to latch I on to. I don't care where the story goes. I know where it's going. They're going to blow shit up. It's yeah, it's not about that. What's the arc? It's not about that though. It's about Oppenheimer slowly realizing over time that he made a terrible mistake and he just makes terrible mistakes. All right, well, I know I know that. I right. I get it. I got two more hours left, but I get it already. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I and don't... the storytelling is just, it's, the, it's it, they're in the future, then they're in the past, and they're in the future, then he's doing a dumb thing, now he's doing another yeah, dumb thing. Have you ever seen a Christopher Nolan movie? The timelines yeah, don't work. Yeah, I think he's just getting, uh, um, he's just being more and more Nolan. Yeah. He's like, this is what I think people like when I do this. <laughs> Nobody likes when you do that. <laughs> no, people like when he does that. Fuck that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Retro Collects also said, uh, Bob, will you compare the MiU Flip and S35XXSP? Yeah, when I get the MiU Flip. I've been hearing bad things about the MiU Flip. Uh, and then another $2. And what's with recent vids being This Is Not Blank? I don't know. I just thought that, I just think it's a cool <laughs> title. And, and it worked for three videos in a row. So there the next go. one's definitely not going to be that. But 
uh it just felt it just felt right yeah uh oh and Ma- mako fox with 500 bits Jeez. on which hey wolf bros i am going to be graduating high school tomorrow and God i just wanted to thank you for the years of entertainment and memories you guys have brought me i have listened to every second of every episode <laughs> since 2019 oh my god i'm sorry for wasting time. <laughs> and i can't be more thankful for you guys putting in the work every week to bring us this wonderful show thank you for all the incredible memories i have made a listen to you oh my god thank you, thank you for watching congratulations yes um Holy crap, what school district goes into late June? I think a lot. A couple of them, I yeah. I think they've been getting later. Yeah. Uh, after the explosion, they just argued about his clearance for an hour. <laughs> okay. I mean, but in a cool way. <laughs> <laughs> there is just a, this. There's zero pacing. The movie starts. There is no pacing. The movie starts, and they're just fucking people yelling at each other, and it just doesn't stop for an hour. Just people yelling at each other. He tries to kill somebody in the yeah. first in the first ten seconds of the movie. No, there's no yelling in that <laughs> scene. It's just a lot of fast talking. I okay. I look. I'm not one of those people who says like you need to watch movies a certain way. Mm-hmm. Like you have to go to the movie. I saw the Oppenheimer over three nights in my li- on my living room TV. So I'm not one of those people who says you have to go to the movies for every fucking movie. But Oppenheimer is not a plane movie. <laughs> you can't watch that movie on a plane. You have to like actually like sit down and watch it like properly. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, I'm putting it on a fucking Game Boy and calling it a day. There you go. Uh, more Sony stuff. Sony giving up on PlayStation VR 2. What a... what a God, what a failure this, <laughs> this thing was. <laughs> Until now, the PSVR 2 has been a pretty darn good VR headset. Well over 200 games currently available. Uh, however, the headset now has an insurmountable problem. Sony no longer cares about it. Sources close to Android Central have revealed that Sony is making deep cuts to funding for VR games. Uh, while this writer a paraphrase um, is paraphrasing for anonymity, the source was told that there will be very few opportunities for VR game development at Sony going forward. To back that up, another source, uh, another source informs uh, Android Central that only two PSVR games are in development at Sony. Given the state of the games industry with constant layoffs and studio closing, uh, this writer doesn't exactly feel confident that even these games will ever see the light of day if Sony continues on its current trajectory. Android Central has reached out to Sony about its P- uh, PSVR 2 development plans, but they did not get back um, in time for publication. Uh, we will update the article once we have more information. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised, but at the same time, also not surprised because like they there was a big push initially for psvr2 yeah and then radio silence and now nothing you know like at least with playstation with psvr1 like they they tried a little bit longer it was a little bit of a similar situation it was but i i got the sense that like they still tried more they they wanted it to be successful uh it was vr was still in its infancy and a lot of there was a lot of hype around it there seems to be a trend of this technology uh people getting caught up in the hype of a new technology and trying to throw all of their bones at it without realizing what it is or yeah. how they can use it in the best way possible uh and that happened with playstation vr there everybody wants vr here's a bunch of money let's make vr yeah. happen without like trying to do anything cool with it. like it, it's i think that people uh, uh j- jump the gun way too far with vr like like we we are not in a position where vr is like viable well sony certainly did because yeah. it's a wired headset that was initially only available for the playstation 5 they eventually they released an adapter for it but you still need a beefy pc to use yeah, it it's still not great it's 600 dollars, you know whereas for half the price you can get a meta quest and it's wireless and you don't need any attachments to it yeah and you just use it right out the gate you know i think you know People don't understand that like VR is a niche product. It's for an enthusiast crowd and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but 
they keep selling it like it's going to be the next iPhone or the next, you know, smartwatch or whatever. I do think that VR will eventually be uh, the way that we interact with a lot of stuff, but it's so far away from where we are currently. Like, yeah. like it's, it feels like it's getting further away. Than, right. than what I thought. I thought the technology would advance a lot quicker than it has, and it has not. Especially when Apple came out with theirs, like Apple making their headset, you're like, oh, Apple's gonna figure it out. Apple's always a f- generation or two behind, and they uh, take technology that exists and they make it better. Right. That's Apple's thing. They took the technology that exists and they just added a couple zeros to the end of the price tag yeah. and released it instead of making it as yeah. amazing as it yeah, could possibly be. I don't be. see and like people are returning their VR, their Apple Vision Pro because they realize there's nothing they can do on it. Apple like it is trying to figure out how to make a a entry entry level model for it, but that apparently I, they they don't know how to make it less than a thousand dollars. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just, the future that everyone's telling us is here is not here. Yeah, no, we're still far away. And, and it's another one of those situations where you shouldn't buy something for the promises of what it will eventually become. And mm-hmm. that's the same thing with VR right now. Yeah. There's, there's no reason to buy a VR headset right now. There's no. There's, also, there's no killer apps. There's some games that are like cool. Yeah. And there's some cool things you can do with it, but there's nothing where it's like, I need this VR headset. Yeah, like, you know, thing. there's Half Life Alex, there's Resident Evil, there's whatever but there's beat saber but like none of them are none of them are like you know those are cool for a romp yeah you know i know somebody who just got a meta quest 2 and i'm telling them like there's there's good games on it there's beat saber there's moss there's like this there's resident evil there's but like he said like i played it for a little bit and i have to stop after 20 minutes i don't know if i'm gonna pick this up again yeah (laughs) because i and that's like the story of like every vr headset yeah well i mean some of them are are better with motion sickness. Um, yeah, PlayStation VR is actually really good uh, for yeah, motion yeah. sickness. I was in it for a long time without feeling like I was going to throw up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's just not a lot to do. There's not a lot that's yeah. for me. So uh, I'm not surprised that Sony's dropping it. Uh, I think that they should stick to consoles because that's what they do. Yeah, like a lot of times when there's new technologies, uh, these companies should conform to to try to make sure that they don't end up uh, getting uh, thrown to the wayside. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think this is one of those situations, at least not yet. Yeah. Um, so anyway. Uh, Orvindorf, thank you for the 18. Uh, Speaking of Apple, let's talk about... I threw this one in here. Okay. Uh, this is... The Arc MU Game Boy emulator for Apple Watch. Ooh. Everybody's telling me I'm listening. I need to look at this. Stop telling me I need to look at it. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with this. Uh, this is not an article. This is a forum post on Mac Rumors because I couldn't find an article. Uh, this is what the game looks like. Uh, hello, Mac Rumors community. I'm Raphael, developer of Arc- Arcadia. And I'm excited to introduce Arc MU, a Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance emulator for Apple Watch, iPhone, and iPad. Oh, okay. They're all, he's only showing the Apple Watch version. I didn't know it was also the other ones. The emulation cores used are Same Boy, uh, okay, and MGBA. Okay, I use MGBA. I worked hard to make games playable on such a small screen. The arrows are arranged in an inverted T shape to take up as little space as possible. Yeah, it's like a computer. Yeah. Um, there's also a hold slash sustain feature for the A and B buttons. It works a bit like voice messages on Telegram. That's great. Uh, there is a feature like that in Delta 2, so it makes running easier in a game like Mario. Mm-hmm. Uh the resolution for Game Boy Color games is two times the original on all Apple Watches. For Game Boy Advance games, the resolution depends on the screen width. Since the resolution isn't precise and images appeared blurry, I created an anti-aliasing shader. Okay, so Game Boy Advance. Whoops, Game Boy Advance isn't going to look that great. But Game Boy Color looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh Oh, I see the L and the R. That's going to be a disaster to play. <laughs> um, on iPhone, there is all there's support for rumble, gyroscope, accelerometer. On Apple Watch, the gyroscope is emulated via the digital crown, which works surprisingly well, while the accelerometer is supported. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That means you could play... Wait, never mind. What's a game? I'm thinking pedometer. Oh. 
That's different. Yes. That's a difference. <laughs> uh in terms of performance most i guess accelerometer would be like wario where yeah yeah in terms of performance most games should run relatively smooth 60 frames a second on compatible apple watches however you can set the fps cap to 30 to save battery additionally the emulator skips identical frames okay loading roms is very simple from the okay i don't need uh two dollars on the app store i just looked it up two dollars no i don't know how i feel about selling money or, or selling emulators for money, right. but uh, I mean, these developers put it a lot of work, so yeah, it just feels like it's ripe for getting a cease and desist. But yeah, you you do run a risk. I mean, if Apple allows it, yeah. why not? Uh, so go ahead. I mean, I don't think it's that bad playing like emulator uh, or, or playing like Pokemon games on a touchscreen like this because right. there's not it, it's all menus. You don't need a lot of mm-hmm. like a uh, uh, it, it wouldn't be so hard to play it on a touch screen. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to play on your wrist when you can play it on your phone. But enjoy yourself however you, you wish. I, I wish I wish you were enlightened to the smartwatch revel. Doing things on your watch is cool. <laughs> it's cool, Bob. When I can I've never just... been a watch guy, although I looked at I saw a Casio watch. <laughs> A G Shock, and I was yeah. like, "That's a fucking cool watch." And yeah. I saw it was only a hundred dollars. I was like, "That Ooh, watch is only hundred dollars, cool." And then I saw I was going, I was, I was down the rabbit hole of Casio yeah. watches, and I saw one that looks like the health bar in Golden Eye. Ooh, and I was like, "That's, that's fucking it. cool." I don't know if I'll ever be able to find <laughs> it again, but that's the one thing I don't like about the Apple Watch is like it's got the square face, so you can't have like a good Golden Eye. Uh, screensaver on it yeah they should make a round one yeah but like at this point like the form factor is like set you know because like they've all been this well i know a lot like a lot of people don't want an apple watch because then they can't wear their own watch they can't wear their fancy watches so just get a band get a new band it'll be cool to have a circular watch face yeah that then they can make look like a fancy watch i guess but Right. Holy lettuce! I think it's fun. I understand why they made it. Sometimes it's about the what. It's sometimes it's just about the. I wonder if this will work. Then getting it to work. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate that too. I think it's uh, silly, but I like that it exists. All right. Um. More news. Street Fighter movie. Why are we talking about the 1994 Street Fighter movie? Because apparently it still makes Capcom money. Wow. I mean, yeah, I'd imagine that. Uh, some as, money. as first reported by Automation Media on June 24th, according to an individual who attended Capcom's June 20th shareholders meeting, the Monster Hunter and Resident Evil publisher is still making tens of million of yen from the 1994 live action Street Fighter film every year. Every Not, year? Every year. Not sure why Capcom decided to include this odd bit of information in its important meeting with investors and stockholders, but here we are. That, uh, well, I mean, that means make another fucking movie. <laughs> I mean, they tried and they yeah, didn't and do that too good. Apparently just even worse. Yeah. Um, before you go running off and tell ca- people Capcom is making heaps of money on uh, the not so great Street Fighter movie, t- uh, to translate tens of millions of yen uh, equates to maybe roughly between. Sorry, it could mean that Capcom is making as little as seventy thousand dollars, or as much as uh five hundred and ninety thousand dollars a year from the Street Fighter movie. It's probably it's probably safe to say it's somewhere in the middle of that range, so around three hundred thousand dollars. It's not enough money to fund the next Resident Evil game or anything wild like that. But hey, it might be enough to pay for a few employees. I mean, the game is uh, the movie is from nineteen ninety four. Yeah. So if they're still making three hundred thousand dollars a year, a couple of years. That adds up. Yeah. You know? That's a Resident Evil game. Right. You know, $300,000 a year over 20 years, 30 years. Yeah. 30 years. I think, you know, because like Street Fighter, the movie, the 1994 Street Fighter movie, it's a bad movie. It's not a good movie <laughs> in, any, in any way, shape, or form. It's notoriously a bad movie. It's one of the early, you know, video game, bad movie, bad video game movies, whatnot. It's like the prototypical one. But how is it still making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year yeah after almost 30 years uh yeah i don't get that where could you even see it if you i don't know like it? are people streaming it are people like buying it on blue it did co- 
a special edition Blu-ray came out like I think before the pandemic. People are probably watching clips on YouTube that are that are copyright striked and, oh, and yeah. they're getting there's money that because that like you know in all fairness the movie's funny it's not intentionally funny it's it just happens to be funny yeah because you got john claude van damme trying to do an american accent failing you got raul julia giving an oscar caliber performance in a movie that does deserve it um yeah uh you can just rent it on youtube for four bucks there you go oh wait it's on other things google play apple tv uh but it's all you gotta pay for yeah, yeah uh and then there's the other we fight a movie legend of Chun-Li, Chun-Li, yeah whatever. heard that was not good yeah is, that is some that was tried to be like a serious take on street fighter and somehow was much worse like significantly worse uh limited run games announced 20 plus new physical game oh god we're not reading uh, I, I'll just speed run it. Uh, Assault Suit, uh, Leonos, Beyond Good and Evil, 20th Anniversary Edition, Bubsy in the Perfect Collection, uh, C-Smash VRS, Clock Tower Rewind, uh, Cosmic Fantasy Collection 2, Fear Effect, G.I. Joe, Wrath of Cobra, The Gex Trilogy, Hitman, Blood Money, Reprisal, uh, Jay and Silent Bob, Chronic Blunt Punch, <laughs> Lollipop Chainsaw, Repopped, Ninja 5-0, Penny's Big Breakaway, Rain World, Rugrats Adventures in Game Land, uh, Shantae Ooh. Advance, Risky's Revolution, Starship Troopers Extermination, Star Wars Dark Forces Remastered, uh, Tomba Special Edition, Tomba 2, Toxic Crusaders, Valus, the Phantasm Soldier Collection 3, and Wolf Assigned to the New Colossus for the Switch. So... G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra, that's a new game? Completely that, new game? That's a completely new game. It's a uh, side-scrolling beat em up in the same vein as your um, Shredder's Revenge or the new Ninja uh, Turtles okay. game that yeah, came that's out. The yeah. new thing? There's a demo of it on Steam. Uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You did like it? I didn't like it. It did not like it's it. It's slow. It's very uh, sluggish. That's so nice. I'm not, not into that. Okay. But um, I mean, you got some cool things in here. You got uh, the Gex trilogy. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of these I knew, like, are, are, are things that we knew about. Yeah, I think, well, the Wolfenstein, uh, Wolfenstein 2 is a big deal because that's the Switch version. That never got a physical release. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Penny's Big Breakaway is the physical version of that is new. Uh, Ninja 5.0, I think, is new. Uh, f- so this is just games we didn't know were getting physical. Right. Yeah. Rugrats we did. Rugrats we did. Yeah. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 was supposed to be a surprise reveal, but Ubisoft kept screwing that up. And Limited Run Games is finally like, all right, we're, do- we're doing the physical version of it. Okay. Uh, so that's cool. I've never yeah. been... Like I, like, I like the idea of Limited Run stuff, but I already got too much shit. I don't need all this yeah, stuff. Uh, f- I'm fine with digital now. Yeah, also too, like I know Limited Run has had like controversies in the past with like printing on CDRs instead of like actual we factory. talked about here recently. uh f- a lot of their collected editions aren't really up to snuff um uh, they don't keep games in print like they they literally just do a limited run and that's it which drives yeah. the value up and like kind of defeats the purpose of keeping games available yeah so okay but hey if you want a nice fancy box for uh dark forces there here's your Go chance ahead. uh we got Five dollars from Ryan, who's Ryana, who says, uh, probably playing the Street Fighter movie on planes and stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, airlines and like even cable companies, like they'll pay a decent amount of money for like old stuff to just air on. I was TV. thinking about that because there are a lot of movies on those planes. Yeah. Uh, Xbox head implies Tango Game Works closure may have been due to change of leadership. I was saying that. <laughs> Uh, in an interview on Variety Strictly Business podcast, Matt Booty eh, uh, eh. was asked specifically about the closure of Tangle Gameworks and why it took place. Although he didn't name anyone specifically, Booty implied that a change of leadership and staff at Tango may have been one of the reasons for the closure, suggesting that while Hi Fi Rush was a success, there was no guarantee the remaining set uh, setup would uh, have delivered similar success in the future. I wouldn't get into the real nitty gritty details on what went into the decision, mostly out of respect for the people there, Booty said. Um, 
just because there was a lot of work that went into delivering Hi-Fi Rush, which was a great game and did well for us. I think the thing to I think the thing to be considered is that for us, it it's as much a forward-looking situation as much as it is a looking back at a certain game. There are a lot of things that go into success for a game. What leadership do you have? What creative leadership do you have? Uh, is the team the same? Ah, pop up bad. Uh, is the team this is the team the same that shipped something successful previously we have to look at all those things together and ask ourselves are we set up for success going forward and while there uh, may have been factors or situations that previously led to success they may not all still be in a place uh, as you look at what you're doing going forward although he didn't specifically state it booty's answer appears to at least partially be referring to to the departure of Tango founder Shinji Mikami, who left the studio in 2023 to form a new company. Mikami, who directed The Evil Within and oversaw Tango's other games and executive producer role, is best known for his time at Capcom, where he directed the first Resident Evil, its 20, uh, 2002 GameCube remake, and Resident Evil 4, among others. His decision to leave Tango may have had an impact on the studio's value at Microsoft, something Booty appears to imply in his latest explanation. Yeah, my understanding was that Tango Gameworks even existed in the first place because Shinji Bakami was the head of it. Yeah, he founded the studio. Yeah, and, and then, then that's why Microsoft was like, we'll give you whatever you want if you're going to make the studio. Yeah. Well, uh, and then he leaves, and then they're like, oh, well, there goes all of the value of the studio. But, like, that's ridiculous, honestly. It is, because he didn't have anything to do with Hi-Fi Rush. I believe he was just the producer. He wasn't, like, yeah. the creative director of it. You know, it, it, it just it doesn't... It doesn't make sense because, yeah, he left, but th you didn't even give the team a chance to prove itself. You just dissolved it quickly without, you know, yeah. any any need to, like, actually look at what you have. Yeah, no, I, I, agree, I yeah. agree. It's not a smart decision. Uh, it's a stupid decision. Yeah. But uh, they're business people that are looking at numbers. The, 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 yeah. What they should have done was... Uh, there should have been a Tango Gameworks pitch for a new game, and they should have taken it from there. I think there was. I think they were like preparing to pitch another game, and then like before they had the chance, Microsoft's like, no. Or maybe they did, dead. and Microsoft was like, that looks bad. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. Um, there were probably opportunities for a new Tango Gameworks game to do pretty good, but yeah. uh, we'll never know. Yeah, because they 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 cut that off. Uh, all right. Next news, uh, some original devs working on Mario Luigi games. Did we talk about this? No. Uh, Nintendo this week announced a brand new Mario Luigi RPG, uh, Mario Luigi Brothership. Like a lot of the company's new releases nowadays, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't ready to reveal the team behind the Switch project, but now we've got a small update on this. Uh, game file, Steven Tatello asked a Nintendo rep who the developer of Brothership is now that Alpha Dream is out of action. And although they wouldn't reveal this information, apparently some of the original developers who worked on the franchise are involved. As noted by VGC, some of the team members who stayed on at Nintendo after Alpha Dream folded include the company's former uh, development manager, uh, Hiroyuki Kabuda, who is now at Monolith Soft, and uh, Mario Luigi director and producer uh, Yoshihiko Mikawa, who recently supervised the Switch version of Super Mario RPG. Uh, as for the developer behind the new Mario Luigi game, um, as for when the developer of the new Mario Luigi game will be revealed, according to the Nintendo rep, fans will just have to wait and see the game credits at release. There are noticeably plenty of theories already going around online. While Nintendo has recently been rather selective about the developers behind the projects recently, uh, it doesn't always go to plan. Earlier this week, official documentation seemingly revealed that Polish company Forever Entertainment is involved in the development of Donkey Kong Country Returns for the Switch. It's very odd that Nintendo doesn't want to tell you who is developing. It's very annoying that Nintendo yeah. doesn't... Uh credit their developers yeah it's very strange it, uh we had to find out through weird means yeah and uh even when the games then win awards nintendo takes all of the credit and they don't give it to the development company it's very much they want you to think that like nintendo just makes these games yeah. so like you press a button and you press the nintendo button and a game comes out that there yeah. aren't like people it's weird because like they don't want you to think that there's like people working on this game but at the same time they do talk about how like people who work on the last mario game have been working on mario since the beginning yeah 
you know, they're they're very proud of the fact that like they are able to retain employees, but at the same time, they don't want you to know who these employees are. They don't want any of these employees uh coming out with any of their own controversies yeah. or anything, you know. Well, uh, no, they don't want people leaving and then going off to do their own thing. It's very yeah. much the Imus Comics situation. Yeah. No, I I, I could see oh. that. Um But I'd imagine at Nintendo, they also have a lot of uh, uh there's a lot of the top people at Nintendo who are Working with all of these studios, yeah, you know, like I, I, the studios are doing ninety percent of the work, but then uh, they're getting notes from the corporate, you mm-hmm. know. So I'd imagine they're a lot closer working with these studios than other uh, publishers probably would be. Uh, but that's good, and I, I hope that something like that's happening at Microsoft or or these other companies that are closing down beloved studios. I hope that they are uh, retaining some of that talent, yeah. and moving them over to other studios to pick up some of the stuff, like maybe. We could see a high fire rush too, yeah, uh, at a different publisher with a lot of the same talent. <laughs> uh, all right, next Jet Set Radio remake snapshots and videos appear online. So I saw this, and uh, I, today I saw tweets that were like, "Jet Set Radio uh, is being remade," and I'm like, "We knew that." Yeah, we it knew. Was, yeah, like, we, they, Sega they announced like they were. Already. Like re-making and like re-releasing a lot of their old games, Jet uh, Jet Set Radio, Streets of Rage, six uh, of them. Yeah. yeah. So like we knew this already, but like this is like allegedly actual gameplay footage being released. Um, so you can just show it on screen. Uh, there's the map screen, and then there's Whoa, motion it looks like blur. Beat. That's, uh, that's Akihabara. I think. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. This uh, looks cool. Yeah. It looks, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't look as cell shaded as the original version, which is like, that was like that whole game's thing. Yeah. It was like Bomb a cell shaded. Cyberfunk looks a lot like uh, a more modern uh, yeah. uh, Jet Set Radio. But this is doing a pretty decent job. I, I, I don't hate this. Yeah. Like the vibe is there. It's just, it's not as animated as yeah. the original version. I which... was expecting uh, this, these six sega games that they're remaking i was expecting them to be lower quality right but this actually looks pretty good yeah uh in the in the article you, there's actually video footage too oh yeah, I so see that. i mean again it's early so like it's not like but this actually doesn't look too bad very low quality yeah probably like from twitter yeah uh yeah i mean it's early so there's yeah. there's not some of the animations are like weird. And yeah. There's not much going on in the environment, but yeah, there's like that uh, cool. detail not implemented. Yeah. I'd imagine but, this will get a lot better. Yeah. Looking. I hope but so. Like, it's a start. You know, it's nice that like Sega is like acknowledging a franchise that isn't Sonic or Yakuza. Yeah. No, I'm very happy that they're yeah. remaking a lot of their older beloved games. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that at least one of them does well. Yeah. Them. Uh, Crazy Taxi, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, and Shinobi were the other games that they announced. Okay. Uh, next up, st- Twitch streamer just killed off two Shadow of the Entry bosses using mind control. Uh, Twitch streamer Perry Carell has uh, taken down two major Elden Ring Shadow of Entry bosses using a hands-free mind control virtual controller, which decodes electronic electrical information fed directly from her brain in real time. Prior to Shadow of the Entry's uh, release from software president um, Hidekata Miyazaki, was quoted as saying that the challenge posed by the DLC will really push the envelope in terms of what we think can be withstood by the player. True to his word, the day following a Shadow of the Entry's um, June 21st launch, uh, have seen many players take to social media to lament that the new content uh, is simply too hard, while others complain of performance issues leading to a mixed review on Steam. However, its fearsome difficulty hasn't stopped uh, Chiral from attempting to take on the DLC using an unconventional method of controlling her uh, tarnished, uh, which also proves that 90% of a From Software boss fight plays out between the ears. Uh, Kareel, uh made headlines last year for beating Elden Ring's base game connected to uh, while using an elect what the fuck electro an a brain monitoring headset <laughs> to control specific in-game actions such as attacking and rolling. EEG technology is ordinarily used by physicians as a diagnostic 
uh, tool. However, after encountering the brain scanning headwear while studying for a master's degree in psychology, she became curious as to whether the technology could be adapted to control video games as part of a virtual controller. To that end, she was able to use uh, some fancy coding to train the software uh, that came with her commercial EEG headset to recognize patterns in her brain's electrical activity that were brought about when she imagined a particular object, action, or emotion. Uh, each pattern was then assigned to an input on a virtual controller, uh, which allowed her to execute actions with her mind by imagining things during gameplay. For example, by imagining herself pushing a cube forward, she could execute a roll. Or alternatively, she could imagine a plate spinning to make her tarnished uh, perform an attack or simply make herself angry to heal. That's weird. Yeah. I, I need to know more about how that knows that you're imagining a pushing it forward. I mean, I, I figured it was like something dramatic. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm angry. Yeah. So I'm rolling backwards, you know? Is, uh, is it me or is, or is it also eye tracking? It looks like eye tracking. I mean, that's probably part of it. Uh, impressively, she uh, has already managed to use her mind control approach to take down two challenging early DLC bosses in the Divine Beast uh, Dancing Lion and Renalia, the Twin Moon Knight. Uh, of course, this isn't the first time that From Software fans have employed non traditional controllers to shame Elden Ring bosses. Last year, Twitch streamer Miss Mika managed to beat the two uh, Millennia simultaneously in two separate instances of the game while using a dance pad and a PS5 DualSense. Mm -hmm. I. Don't know what the consensus is on this. People said it's mixed. That article said it was mixed reviews because it's hard and yeah. people have performance issues. I think, I think people just need to get good. Yeah, honestly, if this person's beating it with their brain, you just suck at the yeah. game. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, I've heard it's hard and it's too easy. <laughs> and I've heard... Uh, I haven't heard anything about performance See, issues. See, I, I, all I've heard is that it's too hard. And it's surprising because it's mostly coming from people who pride themselves on like playing games like this because they're the real game. Yeah, what you can't... bitches? Yeah, what little bitches. I've never what played happened? this game before in my yeah, life. Yeah, neither have I because I know my limits. <laughs> I've played a hard games before. Yeah, you know, me too. we grew up in the NES era. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, is that these kids these days don't know how hard it could be. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta beat the whole game in, in one, one sitting. sitting. And they purposely make it hard so that you don't return it to Blockbuster. Yeah. So, for real, like, you, you just gotta suck it up. Yeah, man. get the game, good. The game is attack, block, roll. Roll. Yeah. Figure it out, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Suspenser, thank you for the subscription. Uh, all right. Uh... I do want to do a stream one day where I, I've never played Elden Ring. I right. played uh, Demon Souls and that one Dark Souls. That we yeah, played. Dark Souls one. Uh, I didn't play much of them. Right, I'm not a huge fan of those. Games. Yeah, uh, but I could see the appeal. I want to just play Milena or Melania, whatever her name right. is. Right. Uh, I just want to pick up somebody's save file and just play that part. That's it. <laughs> just jump in, yeah. uh, without knowing anything about the game and see what happens. Anyway, uh, UK Game Store Game is the name of the game store. Yes. Uh, denies it's denies it'll stop selling physical games. Oh, well, that's a yeah. lie. Uh, UK retailer Game has denied reports it will stop selling physical games in store. This initial report came from uh, Gfinity Esports, who claimed that sources told the publication that the storefront will no longer carry gaming related stock and that gaming hardware and software will only be available on a pre order basis. However, according to Game, these claims are totally false. Uh, this reporting is categorically not true, a Game spokesperson told the press. Game continues to support the physical gaming market, offering a wide range of physical games, hardware, software, accessories, and uh, digital gift cards in stores and online. Uh, the latest report comes, uh, comes soon after a series of significant changes that have recently been implemented at the retailer. Uh, earlier this month, it announced that it would be discontinuing all, uh, sorry, discontinuing its Xbox All Access offer. For context, as of June 26, the game will no longer offer the all-inclusive Xbox All Access plan to new subscribers, a service that allows customers to pay a monthly cost towards their Xbox console and includes 24 months of Game Pass Ultimate. 
Game also confirmed that it will be permanently shuttering its reward scheme and elite membership tier next month, meaning that as of July 15th, customers uh, will no longer be able to earn rewards points from purchases and will have until July 31st to spend their points before they are gone for good. In addition to these changes, as well as a series of layoffs uh, that move that move staff to zero hour contracts, the UK retailer halted all trade-ins in the stores uh, to phase out its pre-owned stock. Yeah, uh, I think it's not looking good for these types of games. No. Retailers. There's just too many ways to buy games now. And, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, you know, when we were younger, we would go to GameStop and just like you know oh let's go find a game or yeah like, oh i want this thing i'm going to games that would just be the immediate thing mm -hmm. that, uh these days nobody does that yeah you want a game you buy it online yeah uh you buy it up you buy it from amazon or you buy it from the console directly you yeah. know i was in, again i was in target today and their video game section is like essentially barren yeah like there's nothing there like people aren't really buying games in store anymore and stores are not stocking them you know it's kind of a shame but like this that's the way that everything's going i could see the value in making big stinks about midnight releases because yeah nobody really does that anymore and that would be a great way for me to get the game immediately when it comes out especially yeah. like a multiplayer game like you want to start playing that immediately and yeah. some of these have collector's editions and you want the collector's edition but you don't want to miss out on playing it at midnight so right some people buy these games twice for that reason yeah uh but that's it. That's really it. Yeah. And, I and think otherwise I don't see the value. I think we reached a point where like game stores, you know, have to essentially act like, you know, if they want to survive, they have to do, do like use record stores where like they only carry like old, old stuff, retro stuff, you know, cause that's the only way like you're going to see any profit now. Cause if, if, they're, if they're not focusing on modern physical releases then you got to focus on like the older stuff. We have to talk about banana. I guess not. I just don't know what the hell it like. It's I, just a game where you get a PNG of a banana, and right. some of the PNGs look cooler than the other P. Okay, that's it. All right. And it was in the news because of how stupid the game was. Right. But, but people thought it was a scam. Well, yeah, but it was so dumb that people are now playing it ironically. Okay. And it became pretty popular for how how people playing it ironically okay it like unironically is one of the most popular steam games <laughs> okay <laughs> but forza horizon 4 will be delisted from digital store uh we on, love we love it when this on happens. december 15th meaning it and additional content will no longer be available for purchase on the microsoft store or steam uh playground games attributed the decision to delist forza 4 Forza Horizon 4 to licensing and agreements with our partners, referring to the franchise's complex array of cars and music deals. Forza Horizon 3 was previously delisted in 2020. As part of the run-up to the delisting, Playground Games revealed it, uh, its final roadmap for Forza Horizon 4, uh, confirming that the final series uh, will begin on July 25th and end on August 22nd. After that, it will no longer be possible to access the playlist screen, but fans will still be able to access the Forza event screen excuse me along with a selection of daily and weekly challenges that can be used to earn uh forza -thon points in the meantime playground games is delisting forza horizon force dlc starting today with only the standard deluxe and ultimate versions available for purchase for those looking to pick up forza horizon 4 before it's gone playground games says it will run various discounts including a sale on the xbox store on july 14th um after december 15th Forza Horizon 4 will be delisted de from stores and Game Pass. It will still be available to play and re-download for those who already own it, and online and multiplayer features will remain intact. Playground Games also confirmed that physical copies will continue to work as normal. Originally released in 2018 uh, for the Xbox One and PC, Forza Horizon 4 takes the popular open-world racing series to the UK, including changing seasons, among other features. Uh, IGN wrote at the time that it combines a beautiful world with uh, it was a good game. <laughs> so yeah, that's it's, terrible. It's baffling to me that a Microsoft first party game, uh, one of their premier franchises, they're just gonna not let you play. It really doesn't make any X sense anymore. Yeah, I forgot that they did the same thing to Forza Horizon Three. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, I that's mean, crazy. This says it's, and it's not even that old. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. This says it's due to a uh, complex array of licensing issues with cars and music. 
Like, again, I don't understand it. I don't understand, like, how can you license something for a short period of time? Like, why can't it be, like, in perpetuity? They have, why to, they have to know that they're going to lose the license, and they have to know that it doesn't matter to them financially. Like, they have to know, like, this game's only going to be on storefronts for six years. So what? Like that's they're weighing their options between having this license versus not having the game in six years. But like I don't understand because like you know I'll I'll use movies again because it's the closest comparison. Like you you make the movie, you put a popular song in it, and you can release that movie in perpetuity. Like yeah. you don't have to relicense the song every time you want to put a movie on DVD or Blu-ray. So yeah, like, I don't know how they get away with uh, charging so much for licensing in in. Uh, yeah, like, like I don't know these these like movie these music companies think that having their song in a movie is like the coolest thing ever, but having it in a, a video game or a YouTube video is the worst thing ever. Well, no, having it in a YouTube video is the worst thing ever. I think now they've come around to like the video game aspect. Well, of not it. enough. I'd imagine that the yeah, licensing enough, is still but, a huge problem with, yeah. with video games compared to how it is in movies. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's. Especially again, it's a Microsoft first party title. Like yeah. they should yeah, be they should, figure they it should out. be protecting their franchises better. Yeah. They should figure it out. Yeah. Have better license. Yeah. Uh that's it. That's all the news. Yeah. Everybody can go home. But we gotta do this. Twitter the week, Twitter the week, Twitter the week. This one's from Paladin Amber, who says, if you can't handle me at my honk shoe, honk shoe, me, 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 then you don't deserve me at my hawk tour. <laughs> Get it? That lady was all over my uh, social media feeds for like days. I feel a little bad because she clearly does not want to be no. all over everybody's feeds. <laughs> and, then, and then like, it's so funny because like it, it was her for like days and then like, like a beacon of light, the Superman set leaks happened, and it's just like just all Superman, and I'm like, okay, there we go. And then uh, Rachel Brosnan hand is Lois Lane. I'm like, now that, that's a woman there. Oh god damn, yeah, she is my favorite Lois Lane. I haven't even seen the movie yet. Uh, all right, now we're talking to you guys. Yes, let's start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Them Podcast over on the YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Wolf Them Podcast. I know Bob ninety four. That's not true. Says we need a Mario and Luigi ROM hack where Mario and Luigi are replaced by both of you. <laughs> Only other change would be Mario's voice being replaced by a raw recording Bob saying Mario. I mean, if they're replaced by us, like I would imagine we would just call each other by our actual names. Yeah, that's you know? well, no, he they they want the right. They want the the Mario. Okay. Uh Tilted says, Hey Will. I'm the target demographic for <laughs> Funko Fusion. I'm 25. That's not old enough. Yeah. I love the old Lego Star Wars game and Scott Pilgrim, Jaws, and the Universal Monsters movie. Wow. <laughs> uh, you're admitting that? <laughs> Are, the Universal Monsters movie is some of my favorite IPs. I'm not even a big Funko collector, and I'm super pumped for this game. That's bizarre. Somebody messaged me on Twitter saying that like their kid was into Masters of the Universe. And that, like, shocked the hell out of me. Well... Because I didn't think kids were into Masters of the Universe. You know, like, a kid could just latch on to any random thing. True. They just... just anything could happen where they come across just some random thing, and, like, that's the thing they're into. Yeah. You know? Uh, Ami pa po Poyo, what are your guys' favorite 3DS games? Mm. I really liked Pilot Wings. Yeah. And nobody else did. It got like a 70 something on Metacritic, but I really liked Pilot Wings. I don't know if I've played enough 3DS to like actually like sit down and say like this right here is a favorite game system. I'll say Pilot Wings. Uh, I didn't really love Samus Returns. Yeah. I feel like it's a Game Boy game. Right. Um, so Pilot Wings, uh, Star Fox, even though it's the same thing as the N64 game, yeah. it's still a good game. Um, God, what else? I, there's definitely other yeah. 3DS games. Oh, uh, New Super Mario Brothers, Mario 3D Land. Yeah. Um, Super New Super New Super Mario Brothers Two Gold Edition. Which yeah. Is, good luck getting that. Uh, has some of the hardest Mario levels ever created. Right. Uh, 
that are now lost to time yeah. uh, because you can't download. I was thinking the other day, I do regret not getting a new Nintendo 2DS. Oh, I have two. You want one? No, no. The, <laughs> the new one. Oh, the, the new one. Yeah, yeah no. Because that was the clamshell one. It was basically a, 3D, a new 3DS, but like without the 3D aspect of it. I'm yeah. like, that's what I actually wanted. That's what I should have gotten. Yeah, those are cool. And it was cheaper at the time. Now I think it's expensive because they didn't make that much because it was just towards the tail end of the life cycle. Uh, I'm looking at 3DS games. Honestly, uh, I think yeah. <laughs> I think you're good with what we uh, came at you with. Uh, people liked Kid Icarus. I didn't like Kid Icarus. Um, Professor Layton's kind of good. Yeah. All right. Where am I? Where is it? Where are you? Uh, it's a me, Eric. Would you change your YouTube name? It said, Nintendo, if you don't give us N64 battle tanks, I will be very sad. Was Now, is that on Virtual Console? I don't think so. Those are 3DO games. I don't know who owns the 3DO license, uh, the 3DO library. I do remember the battle tanks games being like big deals on N64. There was two of them. I, th I think they were fun. I have played them. I think I enjoyed them. I don't remember. It was, it was so long ago. Yeah, the publisher went under, so yeah. good luck. All right, Eric. A slick dude says, awesome direct and awesome podcast. Love to see the brothership between y'all. We got to adapt that before Nintendo like <laughs> takes us down. Uh, and that's it from that's it. the comments. From yeah. last week. Uh, now we're in chat. Yes. Uh, how y'all doing, everybody? Rock and Val, thanks for gifting some subs. And Mr. Suspender, thanks for resubbing. Appreciate everybody. Uh, game releases. The Elder Ring DLC is also built around another mechanic of the Skadu fragments that give you buffs. So if you just go straight to the bosses without any fragments, yes, it can make the DLC unnecessarily harder. That kind of like uh, not doing any of the divine beasts and going right to Ganon. So Bob, you didn't like Mario Maker on 3DS? No, that was like. A really botched version of it. Yeah. Uh, Will, with movies, it depends on the contract. One of the Muppets movies in the 80s was made for TV, and the music license was only for TV. So when they put it on VHS, they had to change the music. I know there's cases where movies get delisted, for, but it's only for like a minute, and yeah. then they get relisted once and the license then like, gets And then in a situation out. like that, you know, same thing happened in Wayne's World. They had to like change the music for the VHS release, but like there are options, there are solutions to it. You know, I video games. It's like, Oh, we can't use this one song. We, the, the whole game's got to disappear for all time. Yeah. You know, I, that's, that sucks. And like, that has to change. There needs to be solutions to that. We do nowadays, like it should be okay. Cause they're most games have like a streaming mode where the licensed song doesn't uh, doesn't play. It's like a royalty free song instead, and like you could just do that and like sell that version if you lose the rights to a song. Drunk Goral Gamer would like to hear you guys rank your favorite movies sometime. Love the banter with Oppenheimer earlier. I don't watch enough movies to say what my favorite movies are. Yeah, I've I've fallen off. Also, I like watch movies once in the next, yeah. and so I don't really know how much I, I would I, like it if I watch it a second time. I, I do like to watch movies more than once, if I really like the movie. Like, I'm trying to get my wife to watch Fury Road, because I know she'll like it, but she's just, just dragging her feet. <laughs> uh, Will, watch The Boys. I don't think you'll be disappointed. At least you should experience it, good or bad. I mean, I don't think I'll be disappointed either. It's just, again, like, I have, I have two kids who take forever to go to bed, so, like, I don't have time to watch... <laughs> To like dedicate to a show. I watched the first episode of The Acolyte. I want to watch more of it, but it's been like a month since I, I can't like, imagine I can... liking The Acolyte. I don't think that that's for me. I mean, well, you just hate Star Wars, and now I so, now yeah. I hate Star Wars. <laughs> um, Retro Collects says Will gives me the feeling of a guy who buys Lego. No, because they're fucking expensive and big. And <laughs> yeah. where you put them? 
I do like, so if you're in the store, like, and you see, like, they sell, like, little baggies for, like, $5. It comes with a minifig and a little tiny vehicle that you can put together. I like those because they're $5. And you can buy a lot and just line your desk with them. So, yeah. like, those are fun. Those are cool. Yeah. Uh, is that it? You got, did you watch Inside Out? No. I saw the first one. I haven't seen the new one yet. Uh, regardless of how good or bad it is, the acolyte is lore breaking as fuck. Uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. So far, nothing I've seen that's lore breaking is all that lore breaking. Um, is Yoda in it? He's in that timeline. He hasn't shown up. As yet. far as I know, he's not in the show. I thought he was the Everybody... leader of the Jedi. No, because it, it takes place like. 200 years before the phantom menace mm -hmm. so like he's not like at the head of the the table yet oh so uh, okay so but he's in that timeline you better show no up. coyote mundi is in the show oh yeah everybody's favorite jedi and everybody's mad because like a trading card one uh from like 1999 said he was 70 years old oh so but like he's in this show that takes place 200 years in the past you know god forbid that Star I don't, Wars. I don't give dis, a dis fuck about Keanu Mundi. <laughs> about God forbid a Star Wars show disregards the continuity of a fucking trading card. Yeah. No, I could I could care less about. That. Yeah. I it's just that like the Jedi aren't like my favorite thing about Star Wars. Like I like when the lightsaber comes out. It's cool, but I want that to be a special thing. I right. want it to be like, whoa, the lightsaber came out. I don't want the whole thing to be lightsabers. You know. I can I can take the whole thing being lightsabers but like you have to do something interesting with it and i think that the core concept of this show is interesting it's not perfect like i don't think it's like the best star wars thing because it it follows the template of like a of a b-grade netflix show where they over explain everything because they don't think you're actually watching it they think you're doing something else while you watch that'll it. be me and uh it's over lit because they don't think you're watching it on TV. They think you're watching it on a phone. That looks weird. I, yeah. di I did notice that it is uh, uncharacter... Uncharac... It's very bright. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it Cause, is they don't bright. Think, because they don't think you're watching it on TV. They think you're watching it on a phone and on a poor reception. That's weird. Yeah. yeah that's Because that's, that's how Netflix makes shows. That's really weird. Yeah. So, but if you can look Andor past that... Andor looks great. Yeah. Because Andor was made by... You know, a professional filmmaker. <laughs> uh, Mandal uh, not the Mandalorian. Uh, the Acolyte is made by someone who got her bone, who made her bones on Netflix shows. So, like, that's what she's used to. It kind of does look like a TV show. It yeah. looks almost like Star Trek. Yeah. Also, because it's a weird time for Star Wars and yeah. stuff. Like a timeline, like in the timeline. Yeah. Episode three is the worst thing I've ever at least watched that one. Heard about of Acolyte? Episode three of Acolyte. I think I think so. As a curiosity, do you think Sonic 06 is worth the five dollars it costs now to buy digitally on Xbox? You can do that. Oh, but it has to be on Xbox, yeah. right? You like you can't buy yeah. it on Xbox Series. Correct. I mean, you might as well because they're closing down the 360 marketplace soon. Five bucks? Why Ooh. not? I, I still would to, love to play it. I would mean to do that. I mean to boot up my 360, like, like set it up and like see what I can have access to before the store closes. Buy, they're running sales. Like there are things on sale for like a dollar on that store. So. Well, five dollars for yeah. Sonic 06. Episode three was a flashback and the kids were terrible. Oh, there's kids I mean, in yeah. the show that are bad. Kids are terrible. Kids are bad. I can kids. attest. Kids are bad, period. <laughs> uh, all right. We're done. Thanks for hanging out. Bro. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden and youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. No matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, we are rating Jackson Scootish. Go say hello in his chat. And tell he him is... he's wrong about his opinions on Perfect Dark. He is all... I haven't heard a good opinion on Perfect Dark <laughs> in my whole career on the internet. Uh, 
he just beat a boss, I think, in Elden Ring. Tell uh, he's hasn't been playing this game well. <laughs> uh, go say hello to Jackson. I'll see you probably on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, for something. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. And then I'll also see you at Too Many Games this weekend. I'll be there, shaking hands. I don't know. Uh, only on Saturday, I think. Goodbye. Bye.